You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. And now it's time to hear some interviews I did when I was out and about in the week and I caught up with some regular visitors to the show, Laura and Louise, to find out all about the latest project they're working on. I spoke to Laura and also the lead artist from their latest project to find out exactly all about it. Oh, hello Daniel, I'm Laura, Laura Knight from Francis Knight, public art consultancy based in Maidstone. So tell us what your latest project is uh, all about. We're working on something called the Chatham Placemaking Project. We were appointed by Medway Council in September 2015. Um, Medway Council have been awarded uh, some government funding to help regenerate Chatham. And we've been looking at the creative public realm, identifying some of that creative public realm for the project. Um, since we were appointed, we've commissioned a lead artist, Christopher Tipping, to start looking at um, the temporary and permanent work that could be rolled out in a phased approach for the project. And at this point, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to speak to that lead artist. Uh, well, my name's Chris Tipping. I'm a, I work as an artist. Uh, I live in Ramsgate in Kent and we came here 10 years ago from London where we'd been set up in studios for 25 years um, but I work primarily in the public realm which means I work in the spaces between buildings and I work with architects and local authorities and developers in trying to I think what I try to do is try to influence the process that goes into regeneration which is to make these spaces better and more enjoyable for people um, but I use a lot of contextual research which is about looking at the way places have been used in the past looking at the history of them talking to people local people I'm really keen on local vernacular which is about the um, actually about being what it is to be local um, I'm, I'm one of the concerns I have about the built environment is that you know if you parachute yourself into lots of towns and cities in the country you wouldn't necessarily know where you were because the places don't speak to you in the same way anymore they don't give clues to the history or the industry that ran the town for example here in Chatham obviously the docks was an enormous driver for the development of community and industry and the economy and even though the docks have closed generationally those families are all still here and they all remember um, what it was like I would say sort of in its heyday but you know because we did a public consultation in the shopping centre not long ago a few, days, a few weeks ago and a lot of people who talked to me were elderly and but had such a, 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 a a backdrop of knowledge about the town and about the shops that used to be here the shops that would have just for example down on military military road all this most of the shops were military outfitters to deal with them um, dealing with all the sort of clothing and, and uh, military and naval uniforms I, th I find those sorts of things fascinating because I sort of think inherently it's all still there in the in the brickwork you know to sort of tap on to um, but I met uh, Laura and Louise Francis Knight in discussing this project and they'd been looking at a number of artists to work with and I was fortunate enough to come on board um, and this initial period has just been about sort of familiarising myself with Chatham and its history and looking specifically at this journey from the station as you arrive at Chatham Station down Railway Street, down Military Street, to the paddock, um, and what sort of sense of arrival you have as a visitor coming to Chatham, um, what experience that's like as a pedestrian or a cyclist coming down through the town. I know, as you all know, you know, the, the, by St John's Church, the street there was sort of basically cut in half by the flyover road, um, 
and that's caused a very sort of abrupt stop to the flow of people and how you how that street has now developed is a very haphazard sort of place it's not the sort of place you want to spend time or hang out necessarily and so part of our remit with working with LDA design on this project is to is to challenge that and to try to regenerate the space to be somewhere that people a want to spend some time but also somewhere that's evocative and tells you a little bit about the history of the town or the history of the space or simply just providing a space that becomes much more user friendly and um, um, and considers considers everybody from 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 a young uh, demographic through to to el- older people and how they uh, uh, travel. See, I don't, I, I can't drive. I, I managed to get to be 55, and I can't drive a car. So I I walk everywhere. So that what's underfoot to me is really important. Um, so I'm always looking at pavements and and curb edges and sort of odd, oddities um, so in some ways the bits that people don't necessarily notice but if they're done right can make a big impact to the way that space yeah. can be and feel yeah i mean in for example in, in southampton i've just finished a project um called canal shore which is by the station and it's 200 meters long along the pavement edge and it just so happens that that pavement edge used to be the line of the high tide of the of the river test estuary so that used to be the shoreline but actually now the shoreline is about a kilometer away because they filled it all in to become docks in the 1930s so we've used this edge of the road to the curb and we've made the curb into a really wide detail in granite and into the granite we've um, had text set into it in another colored granite so all these this narrative then takes you on your journey all the way along the street in front of the station. So wherever you stop, you'll see a reference to something that was there 20 years ago, something that happened yesterday, an anecdotal story that someone's told you about the past. Um, It's just there as a sort of memory jogger. It's interesting for visitors to see and learn from, and, and for local people, it's just jogs the memory about the space that they're in and how valuable it is and it really does have some meaning. Um, yeah, so that's really what I, what I, what I try to do. So, I, I, you know, I work a lot with different agencies as well. I mean, already on this project, I've been to a number of different archives. I've talked to archivists at the dockyards. I've talked to local people on the street doing the consultation. Um, I'm also working with the Medway archives at Strood and building up relationships with people so that they, they're aware of what you're trying to do and how you're trying to do it and use the information. And in doing that, I think they bring... They get excited about what you're doing as well. So they'll start to sort of suggest avenues of interest. Um, and so at the moment what we're doing is, is then going to... Uh, I'm the sort of lead artist on this project, so I've got this sort of umbrella overview about what we are trying to, to do. But that's open-ended as well, and it's open to interpretation. And I think what we're now looking at doing is appointing three other artists to work on what we're calling a temporary programme. So we want to have a filmmaker to document the process, but also to bring another viewpoint, a visual viewpoint to the scheme. We're looking at a writer in residence to assist in creating a narrative, and again, to bring something individual um, and a graphics sort of multimedia person who might be interested in looking at creating a sort of graphic body of work which we're hoping might have printed onto materials um, and disseminated in the local area so but that's you know you write the brief in a particular way but actually when everybody's on board and we start work together and collaborate that's when the sort of magic happens with artists in a way. Just once you get together, you start bringing ideas together. Somewhere in the midst of all that, something really new will happen that you weren't expecting that comes out of left field. And I think that's where the interest thing is. So I can't tell you what that is because I don't know. Um, and we're hoping to just harvest that at some point through the programme. And we'll be able to get it embedded in the permanent scheme, which is the scheme that's going to start running from sort of August through for, the, for another 14 months beyond that where this work will then be embedded and people will see it happening in the street. Um, so the more we can involve the local, uh, 
press or local people or local interested businesses in this in this process now at this early stage when things start to happen and maybe the street in front of the shop gets a bit dug up because they're doing building work they'll know what that's all about and what the narrative means and what the sort of intent of it is i think people buy into that a lot more um, and we'll keep people informed we've got a website going i've got a blog that is going to be open to people coming in and looking at we're tweeting about the scheme various sort of online platforms where we can keep it alive and again people like yourself where we can occasionally come and talk to you about where we are and um and document the the process and introduce the other artists to get involved as well thank you very much